Eddie Stobart trucks travel 185 million miles a year, making deliveries every four seconds. And the 3,000 drivers are the workhorses that keep the wheels of business turning. You name it, we deliver it. You eat it, we deliver it. Every minute lost is cash down the drain. It's big business. Everybody's chasing the next minute. There's no job too difficult. This can, is potentially a bomb. Or too messy. Ooh, cream cakes. <laughs> but it can be trucking hell. Come on, air consumption critical. This week, the Stobart drivers deliver two of the fastest cars in the world. This isn't going anywhere. Even if it rolled over, this will still be here. A brand new trailer gets put through its paces. I'll throw everything at it and see what happens. Hopefully it won't fall apart. And a couple of lucky truckers put on a show at Truckfest. For the last 40 years, Eddie Stobart has been delivering the goods for some of the high street's biggest names. But two years ago, they were given one of the most prestigious delivery jobs in the world. A deal that meant relinquishing Stobart's famous red and green livery. For a precious cargo and a demanding customer. Formula One team, Mercedes GP Patronus. And only the most confident truckers in the haulage industry take on this kind of job. We are the top team within a top team. It's what we call living the dream. 47-year-old Londoner Ivor Bourne is a father of six and granddad to one. He started at Stobart nine months ago and has managed to land himself the jammiest job in the business. I have no idea what they're doing there, so don't ask. The other drivers have nicknamed him Hollywood because he's always flashing his big smile. The grief I have to take for the amount of work that I do here. Ivor's co-driver is Stuart Harpin. I've followed Formula One for years, so to work in Formula One now is, is unbelievable. This is just a dream for me. He's the guy that will pack it properly. He's got a little bit more experience there. I've got more experience of talking. He's a good talker and a grafter. Stewart's the senior driver, and his truck transports Michael Schumacher and Nico Rosberg's cars to the F1 European races. The pressure's on both Stuart and Ivor to get those cars to the Spa circuit in time, because I'm sure Michael and Nico would be very unhappy if they didn't arrive. Today, Ivor and Stuart are at Brackley near Milton Keynes, where the Mercedes GP Patronus team is based. The Belgian Grand Prix is five days away, and they're waiting to take the cars to the circuit at Spa. Right, we're on the move. We're going up. Unlike other Stobart trucks, this one doesn't have a girl's name. It's called Race Truck 4. All trailers are designed specifically for purpose. They're built just for this job. This one is designed specifically to take the cars. Race Truck 4, or RT4 as it's known, is a £200,000 custom-built double-decker. On the lower floor, they store the car's engines, gearboxes and spare parts. A hydraulic lift raises the tailgate to reach both decks with ease. The four-foot-high top deck houses the Formula One cars. This is where you really need to be short. Sure. All part of living the dream. <laughs> the cars are worth around three million pounds each. And the hopes of the entire Mercedes GP Patronus team rest on Ivor and Stuart's shoulders. We have to be the best at what we are at getting the cars, not only into the truck, but off the truck safely. And if we can't do that, we'd be out of a job. And I think yeah, Stobart's would be out of a contract. <laughs> Ivor and Stuart don't work alone. They're part of an eight-strong team of race truck drivers. They're all Stobart employees, but they don't wear the Stobart uniform. Once you've pulled the shirt on, 
you think, yeah, we're here. As far as we're concerned, they're a part of the Mercedes GP Patronus team. But the Stobart drivers haven't lost their sense of identity. No, it doesn't look like a Stobart truck. It's in disguise. Um, but uh, yes, it's most definitely a Stobart truck. Um, has a Stobart fleet number. Sandy drives race truck number two that forms one half of the mobile office unit. Well, these are, these are the race trucks that actually get built up to, to make the office that the engineers work in. His truck might not carry the glamorous racing cars, but his trailer is worth a staggering one million pounds. And that's cause it's a transformer. It lines up alongside its sister truck. Both roofs raise up to 18 feet. The walls come down to form the upper floor of the office unit, known as the tree house. When they're on the road, the roofs need to be lowered to 13 feet. Four pins, two on either side of the trailer, go down into the chassis and lock into place to secure it when traveling. Like everything with F1, it's precision engineering. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Yeah. All four holes, it's locked in, so that shouldn't move from side to side, in theory. <laughs> It's not just the office units and racing cars that need to be delivered to the Grand Prix. There's all the support equipment, like mountain bikes, spare parts and toolboxes. The three trucks that do this job sport the more traditional green and red Stobart livery. At the minute it's all covered over because it's all like top secret stuff, old measurements and whatever. Not even I know what it looks like. The young gun in charge of one of these trucks is 23-year-old Manchester-born Jack McDermott. He's been a trucker for two years, and this is his second F1 season. For a trucker, this is probably one of the best jobs that you could possibly get, and I wouldn't swap it for anything. Jack's mate, Rob, makes up the team. Uh, work work together, together, live together. Sleep together. <laughs> really? <laughs> when you've got the mother of all trucks, you're bound to be asked to take on excess baggage. People come up to you and say, oh, can, I, can you just fit this mountain bike on for me? Or, can you fit this suitcase on because I don't want to take too much stuff on the aeroplane? And sometimes the person asking is a seven-time F1 world champion. So we've got Michael Schumacher's um, sort of electrical push bike here. One of his PA said to us, we've got a bike, can we put it in the back of the trailer for you? Before it's bubble wrapped, Jack decides to check it's in good working order. Hey, he's got a flat tire, you fat lad! He's run out of battery! <laughs> You've killed it! Obviously, Michael Schumacher is a very big name within the Formula One sport. It's working now. There's a batteries in place. Sometimes you'll come and sit next to you and you have your dinner and you're thinking, wow, Michael Schumacher. Michael will be happy to see he's running well. All part of service, service with a smile. With everything battened down, the support trucks head off. That's me done. Uh, next stop, Spa. The convoy of race trucks will travel from Brackley, 110 miles to the Channel Tunnel at Folkestone. From Calais, they'll travel 250 miles to the Belgian town of Spa. With their trailers packed to the rafters, there's just two vital things missing for a Grand Prix. The race cars. Ivor and Stuart are left behind waiting for the F1 engineers to finish making last minute adjustments. They want to make sure they can get everything that can be done here done and then get the cars gone. It's tight, it's not impossible. Coming up, the three million pound car hits a problem. Literally. Two, two three, three, lift. There we go. And a Gulf War veteran's military timekeeping goes to part. It really annoys me because you haven't done your aim. And my aim is to deliver this on time. Eddie Stobart has been delivering everything from pizzas to polo horses for the last 40 years. The company was started by the current boss, William Stobart's dad. Back in 1970, it was an agricultural business with eight lorries delivering lime and slag to the local farms. Now the company has almost 2,000 trucks and 3,000 trailers. 
Before a new model can join the fleet, they need to be road tested. And one of the drivers entrusted with this job is 48-year-old Carl Fisher. I think over the years I've been uh, like a guinea pig with Stolbarts. Uh, any new bear equipment, they've, uh, they've thrown it over to me. Basically, go and play with it. Carl's used to dealing with complex hardware. As an army sergeant, he worked with mortars in Bosnia and the first Gulf War. His military background has given him an idea how to improve the company. If I was in charge of Stolbart, I'd have a lot of fitness. There's a few porky drivers, me being one of them, would uh, shed a few pounds, a few runs around the yard before you start your, your work in the morning. Today, Carl's testing out a new curtain-sided trailer. He's got to trial it on the road for a whole week. All right, Chris. Stobart's no, training well. manager, Chris Grice, yeah. is giving him the guided tour. This morning, I'm just going to show the intricate details of this trailer, all right? Yeah. It's the case of pulling towards you. It's now release the tension mm. in the curtain. The new improved model has lighter curtains, a smoother rail, and a new catch system. All well in theory, but there's nothing like having a driver put it through its paces. We will expect uh, um, minor things to, 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 to crop up, to, to be wrong with it. I'll throw everything at it and see what happens. Hopefully it won't fall apart. Carl's going to put it to the test by delivering 13 tonnes of washing powder to a major supermarket. He's going to be travelling from Appleton, 75 miles down the M6 to Litchfield near Birmingham. Carl's planner, Lee Farrell, needs him to get on the road. It's a time delivery, so um, time is crucial, really. The quicker it gets trained and loaded, the quicker it gets away, um, so it will be quite tight. Finally, Carl's training is over, but it's held him up. It really annoys me that I'm uh, an hour late now, and uh, I like to be there on time, because it's no good after, because you haven't done your name. And on top of being late, he's got to road test the trailer. Stobart has 35 different types of trailers on their fleet. Eight out of ten are curtain siders like Carl's. They make unloading a breeze. Also on the fleet are 500 rear-opening refrigerated trailers with rigid insulated walls. 70 chip liners with a soft top roof to carry recycled waste wood. They've got 50 walking floor trailers with sliding planks to shimmy out loose chippings. Two fuel tankers that each hold enough diesel to fill 80 trucks. There's 80 drawbars designed to carry high volume light loads and at 59 feet in length, they're the biggest trailers on Britain's roads. But it doesn't matter how great your trailer is when you're up against the haulage industry's common enemy, traffic. Now we've got a delay already, which is the last thing you need, especially with a time delivery and with traffic like this. You've just got your fingers crossed. Please, let it start rolling. Carl soon discovers the cause of the hold-up. It's V Festival weekend in the Midlands. And my eldest daughter, Kirsty, she's going there, so I'm just hoping that she's not at the front of that queue and it's because of her I've now uh, been late. If it is, I'll have words with her when I get home. With an impossible 30 miles to go in 15 minutes, his only hope is the supermarket will let him in once he gets there. The most sophisticated trucks and trailers in the Stobart fleet are their race trucks. They deliver the Formula One cars and equipment for the Mercedes GP Patronus team. And they're on their way to the Belgium Grand Prix. But still waiting in the engineer's lab are Stobart drivers Ivor and Stewart, who deliver Michael Schumacher and Nico Rosberg's cars. It is very uh, intimidating at times. And even, even the guys that you're around, I mean, they're at the, they are at the top of their game. And so, it, in, in effect, it brings you up as well. 
Okay, here we go. We've got a car coming through, it looks like. First to be loaded onto the trailer is Rosberg's car. The car goes on the trailer backwards, so that when it comes off the other end, the rival Formula One teams can't see the top secret modifications. The car will have to go back a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah. yeah. After three. One, two, three. That's good enough there. The cars are only partially built and will be put together at the race circuit. And if these don't get to the circuit in one piece, then uh, either get trapped. <laughs> no. The lads have to strap down each wheel. For the journey, old tyres are used. Just to make sure the car is doubly secure, we secure each, each corner. This isn't going anywhere. Even if it rolled over, this would still be here. Nico's car is safely on board. Now they're just waiting for Michael Schumacher's. Well, they've just come out and told us we've got another hour or so to wait for the car, which is, uh, makes it slightly longer than we expected, but, you know, it's par for the course. It's what we're used to. To have the best race car on the circuit, the engineers use their time to fine-tune until the very last minute. You know, it's no, no time to panic just makes it uh, an interesting night, I think. But the more time spent in the workshop means there's no room for delays once Stuart and Ivor hit the road. More pressure, flag on pressure. <laughs> they need to get to the Eurotunnel before midnight and time is ticking by. We'll see later if they make it. The Friday traffic has turned the M6 into a car park. Carl Fisher is stuck in the middle of it and he's missed his time to delivery slot. It does get to you when you can't complete it because uh, you feel as though you've, you've failed in your task, thinking, well, I've let someone down. Idling in the traffic, Carl's using up valuable fuel. His planners back at base are able to record this via the sophisticated Isotrack GPS system. Stobart bosses have brought in a driving standards bonus scheme. The more efficiently you drive, the more money you get in your pay packet. It means if he's a good driver, drives that vehicle correctly, it does better miles per gallon, so we get payback for that, and the driver gets a bonus too. But when you're stuck in the M6 traffic like Carl, you can see the bonus going down the drain and you're constantly aware of your driving technique. Uh, idling, trying to keep your idling down. Harsh braking, trying to keep the harsh braking down. Uh, you're trying to get you to use cruise control in as much part as possible. Uh, you got the green band, which uh, goes from uh, 1100 to 1500 on the uh, RPM. Uh, you're trying to keep it in the green band, which saves fuel. Getting the bonus is seen as a matter of pride for the drivers, but it's no mean feat. I think there's about 65% of drivers in the whole fleet who are actually achieving the bonus. It works by giving the drivers 100 bonus points when they leave base that get deducted over the course of the day. But anything not 75 and over means that they've achieved the £3.50 bonus. £3.50 a day doesn't sound much, but over a year that's an extra 1,200 quid in their pay packet. See, you get the more money, but that gives you the wife more money to spend. Ex-soldier Carl's missed out on his bonus, and to add to his troubles, he's arrived at the warehouse over an hour late. No military timekeeping at all. We've, uh, we haven't achieved our aim. But the supermarket gives him a reprieve and accepts his load. OK, let's go for a single in office, OK? OK, thank you. At least uh, I don't think I'll be called Marshal on this. We live to see another day. Now he's at the depot, Carl can test out the handling ability of his new model trailer. But his planner, Lee, knows it's going to mean another hold-up. In, in normal terms, Carl will maybe go to a collection point, drop a trailer and pick up a loaded trailer. So his, his turnaround time is pretty, pretty quick. Um, because he's got his own dedicated trailer, we have to take it to place where he has to load it every single time. Instead of simply swapping trailers, Carl has to wait for the warehouse staff to unload the washing powder. And he's got to get the trailer ready for his next load. The 
trailer's got to be barred up, ready to uh, receive the cages. It does uh, take a little bit of getting used to because of it being a new trailer. But Carl spots some improvements already. The normal bars are very heavy and bulky. And um, if you, as you can see on these, there's a recess at the back which enables the driver now to hold them where before they wasn't. So it's a lot better. The trailer has held Carl up, but it's past the first day's trial. He heads back to base to hand in his report. As the sun sets in Brackley, Stobart's Formula One race truck drivers, Ivor and Stewart, are still waiting for the engineers to finish tinkering with Michael Schumacher's car. We spend a fair bit of time waiting. So it's when we take our opportunity to have a slight little, little break, take your foot off the gas and recharge the batteries. They've got a 420 mile long journey ahead of them and the delay means Ivor and Stuart will have to drive through the night. But it gives Ivor a chance to fuel up himself. They have given us a time, but we can usually add 45 minutes to whatever time they give us. Mm, heaven. But he spoke too soon. Hey! The car's ready. I have to eat quickly. Millions of pounds and hundreds of hours have been spent getting this lean, mean racing machine in peak performance condition. If we mess up with this, then the whole team is in crisis then because they've no car. Bit more. That's it. Bit more. Bit more. Oh, no. Oh, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now it's up to the Stobart A team to get the race car to the circuit in time. Take her up. And in one piece. You all like that? The car's low slung floor has caught on something. Yeah, it's catching on the tyre. It it's heart-stopping stuff. They're handling three million pounds worth of car. Push it up. We lift it up, push the floor down. Where my hand is in. Yeah. Just drop it down as we push it on. The car's without an engine, so its floor is higher than normal and has rubbed against the wheel. If it needs more work, it could jeopardise getting it to the Grand Prix in time. Yeah, you need to come forward because the wheels are touching. Come forward. Yeah, that'll do. Right. Okay. This is where we need some uh, manpower to lift the front. Yeah, one on each wheel and the nose. One, two, two three. three, lift. There we go. That's it. After a little gentle persuasion, the car is eased onto Lovely. the truck. Yeah. No damage done. Schumacher's car is finally loaded on board. Oh, too much. Too much. Too much. That's it. Wheels secured. They are pretty much good to go and then we're on the move. Coming up, the F1 truckers come unstuck. This is not good, is it? It's messed up under pressure, isn't it? And one driver is put to the test at Truckfest. This thing ain't easy to drive. Eddie Stobart's elite team of race truck drivers have the coveted job of delivering the Formula One cars to the Belgian Grand Prix. Chocolate bar, check. Phones off, check. Good to go, almost. Need to moisturize. With Nico Rosberg and Michael Schumacher's cars safely on board, truckers Ivor and Stewart are having to prove their mettle by making a non-stop seven hour journey to the F1 circuit in Spa. Ivers first up in the driving seat. I'll tell you what, it's good to be back on the road again, though. No? Yeah, it is, mate. Stuart takes his break in the bed compartment behind the seats. Every four hours, they'll swap over, but first, they've got a train to catch. From Brackley, they're travelling 110 miles to the Eurotunnel at Folkestone. Race truck RT4 is senior driver Stuart's pride and joy. But as Ivor's on first shift behind the wheel, it's down to him to get it onto the train. 
training itself is one of my uh, one of my challenges, shall we say, because we've got such a very low trailer at the back. It, does tend to if catch and that's when Stewie starts to get a little bit twitchy especially when I'm driving. You've literally three inches either side going down the train if you get it wrong you're gonna put a scrape all the way down. As Folkestone gets nearer the more nervous Stuart gets. Pressure's on now putting it on train isn't it now it's dark you can't see even less. I mean there, there is literally just enough room for you to angle it in and then turn your cab in and hopefully everything follows in line. You just watch that side, I'll watch this side. But despite Ivor's willingness to have a go, Stuart can't bear the thought of anything happening to his baby. No, I'll we'll swap, mate, I'll do it, thank you. He pulls rank. Oh! Much to Ivor's disappointment, he has to relinquish control of the driving seat. My stint is over. Stu, get us on that train. I'll be watching you like a hawk. Don't you dare scratch this bloody truck. No pressure then, as Stuart attempts to get the £200,000 truck on board that's carrying six million quids worth of cars. Look at them bollards waiting for me. That may be slight. With literally a few inches either side, Stuart's got to use all his driving skills to manoeuvre the truck off the platform and onto the train bed at the right angle. How much room have we got? That's how to go to the left. He's hit the kerb. This is not good, is it? Messed up under pressure, aren't I? Messed up under pressure. It's a bit tight. Oh, should have done all the heat, Tom. <laughs> pressure, that, innit? Pressure. Just want to check this side. With one tyre stuck, Stuart's got to reverse up. <laughs> On his second attempt, he redeems himself. You're just <laughs> really. No, I'm not. <laughs> And listen, there's no stripe on the trailer, is there? Well, this is true. After parking up, a shuttle bus takes the lads to the driver's compartment at the front of the train. Bonsoir. And Ivor's still gloating. Call yourself an F1 driver. <laughs> Not like you to panic, Stu. No, it wasn't a panic. <laughs> After a 30-minute train ride, the lads and RT4 arrive in France. Next stop, the Belgian Grand Prix. And, as usual, RT4 delivers on time. <laughs> Over the Formula One season, Ivor and Stuart will cover 87,000 miles, but for today, it's mission accomplished. It's the pinnacle of the trucking year, Truckfest. A two-day festival celebrating everything trucking, held at Haydock Park Racecourse near Liverpool. It's where all the big guns in the haulage industry showcase their hardware. This year, Mark Dixon and Matt Eakins have been asked to represent Stobart. 33-year-old Matt's been a truck driver for 10 years. Some of us are better than others. We sound the best, but I'm pretty much up there, like you know. His best mate Mark's also mad about trucking. But it's where I like for us. I'll just keep doing it. Diesel gypsy, we call me. Matt and Mark are what's known as trampers, living in their trucks five days a week. Tramping is in your blood. You know, once you've done it, it's hard to come off. This is my norm, this is all I know. Bon appetit. How'd I get my hand in here? I even come my own sponge, dude. The two friends are at the Chelford depot near Manchester, sprucing up their wagons, in readiness for a very different boys' weekend. I don't know who's wetter, me or the lorry. Should be a good crack, looking forward to it. Especially with Mark, like, do you know what I mean? We'll have a babble.
32-year-old Mark sees it as a matter of pride to have the cleanest truck in the festival. You don't want to go there with a, a truck that's beaten up and wrecked and filthy. Yeah, he's truck mad, you know. I don't think he's slept for a week. He's that excited, you know. It's like a little boy with a bag of sweets, bless him. With their trucks, Phoebe Grace and Vivian Margaret all scrubbed up, the lads head 20 miles to the festival at Haydock Park. I just want to get there, and this thing don't go any faster. Little mini adventure. <laughs> Along with 330 other trucks, they arrive at the site. This is the first truck show I've done. Yeah, I've been to truck shows like as a, just a normal member of the public, but I've never ever took a lorry in there. So it's, this is all new to me. In true festival style, it's rainy, much to Mark's disgust. Ah, oh, it's muddy here. I'm hoping my truck's still clean and all. I don't fancy having to wash it all down again. Not exactly the weather for it. With the ground churned up, all their morning's hard work could have come undone. So Mark's doing his best to stay spotless. This is called puddle missing. I'm trying to dodge all the puddles. Ah. And he's got another problem. How the hell do you know that then? He can't find his way in. We're in that main arena there. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, oh, I've cut it. This is the wrong way still. Uh, yeah. I, I can see it now, mate. I can see it now. All right. Seen the gate going in. Take a mega wide turn, though, mate, on the grass. Oh, I'm going to go on Oh, 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 they finally find where they need to park. So well, yeah, this is a title gap that we're going into here. They have to line the trucks up in perfect formation. We've got one chance to reverse it into place so it doesn't leave like marks all over the shop and we've been shunting backwards and forwards. So there's, uh, there's one crack at this and one crack only. So hopefully my 10 years of reversing skills will come into play. Cast off that grasses. You can see how much he's sunk. Truck Fest is all about looking good, so the lads are being supervised by Stobart Special Events Manager, Neil Burden. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? He was had it easy, because he was the first person to do it. Now I've got to get straight to him. You see how he does when he backs in? We have a backup of a tractor if we need it. and then looking forward, mate, I'll tell you. He's directing me where to go. I've got reverse, but look forward. He's, he's pretty good. He's not the best, but he's pretty good. Cheeky get. I'm gonna take bets now. <laughs> Whoa! It should be a bit larger in a minute. Matt, I'm still number one, kid. I think they're both pretty much even. I'll give him this, G. The question is, has the manoeuvring in the mud undone all their scrubbing and polishing? <laughs> is it still clean? No. Yes, no, it's it not. It's filthy. Oh, f They're absolutely filthy. Told you, did I? But Mark's got no time to whip his chamois out. One of Stobart's fuel tankers is on display and needs to be put into position. Always oh, Mark. Mark will do it. He's driving the dreaded tanker. It takes special training to drive one of these beasts on the road. Produced by German manufacturer MAN, it's an unfamiliar make of truck for Mark. You get used to your own truck. Obviously, I drive Volvo. Give me a Volvo, I can drive it. Scania's ain't too bad. MAN's, I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, he probably hasn't found the key out, you know what I mean? There's the gears. That's the start. Ugh. It's not just the truck Mark's not used to. Even looking in the mirrors looks totally different because there's a tanker behind me, not a, a curtain side of trailer. The curtain side is, you know I mean, you've, you've got like a 90 degree angle, it's just straight. Obviously on a tanker it's round, so you can't quite make out where you're going to be straight once your wagon lines up to the trailer. All that's been issues at the moment, like, you know? This thing ain't easy to drive! It has 
never goes or stops. <laughs> This is hard, isn't this? They have to be lined up perfectly. And Mark cracks it. <laughs> Just go, Charlotte. Driver never blames his tools. Right. Get out before it blows up. <laughs> the lads settle into their makeshift campsite. <laughs> Three sausages and the barbecue's full. As <laughs> long as the rain stops, it should be an interesting day, shouldn't it, kid? Yeah, it should be all right. Cheers, John. Ah, uh, Roger Dodge. Coming up, Truck Fest gets underway. And who'll win Best Truck in Show? Hmm. Let's see if there's any dirt behind right there. None at all. Very good. Eddie Stobart has pitched up at Haydock Park near Liverpool for Truck Fest. A two day festival where the haulage industry shows off its best trucks and truckers. Despite the rain, Mark Dixon and Matt Eakins are giving their girls a good rundown. They're both hoping to drive off with the Truck Fest trophy. But well, they have a, a conversation for. Um... All the big haulers that have their own lorries, and obviously the drivers that bring them in. So you, you stand a, me and Matt stand a chance in that. The standard of the trucks that come to Truck Vest and enter the competitions is so high. A lot of them never see the rest of the show. They never go anywhere near the main arena. They spend the weekend cleaning their trucks. The Truck Fest judges go around the whole festival looking for the smartest, cleanest, best kept lorries. That's where we find out who the best of the best is. You won't see them. You won't even know they're there. They come and inspect the lorries like they're just normal, everyday people in disguise. Stobart has a shop that sells their merchandise. It's a big money spinner at events like these, so shop manager Andrew Kidd is setting out his stall. On sale today, we've got a variety of models ranging from £9 rally car right up to the exclusive 150 scale £150 techno truck. The income from merchandise alone brings in around £300,000 a year. Also got bears, stickers, furry dice, coasters, pens, chocolate bar, key rings, baseball caps, picture frames, chair fresheners, pencil tin sits, lunch boxes. People will buy it, we'll put stuff out on it. <laughs> Bit wet, but hopefully that shouldn't detract people from coming. And now, open a business. The masses arrive. <laughs> Armed with a flannel, Matt and Mark are still battling to win the best truck in show contest. But their biggest competitor is the weather. <laughs> Keep drying them. Hey. Down with rain again. No sooner does he get Phoebe Grace the way he wants her. And I'm coming down now, isn't it? I'm sick. They're getting wet. <laughs> We're drowning. <laughs> but not everybody's complaining. It's very busy. It's the rain, weather's keeping people in. And there's one Stobart product that's flying off the shelves. I reckon that's sold. Yeah, another umbrella bites the dust. So a bit of rain doesn't hurt anybody, but it does send the our umbrella sales the world of good. Thank you very much. It's his, not mine. Can I see my brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude. With a break in the weather, Matt drags Mark off for some festival action. Bloody hell. Because some of the stuff people do, especially with the airbrushing and all the painting, it's unbelievable. Obviously I'm a Volvo driver myself, so I like my Volvos. Yeah, that's nice, I like that. I'm impressed. I want my Volvo to like that. Someone's nicked my car. <laughs> See you in a minute. The highlight of Truckfest is seeing the car-crushing monster trucks in action. Car 
me, car is all right. Including four-time European monster truck champion, the UK's very own Bigfoot. While the lads are distracted, there's a visitor to the Stobart fleet. One of Truckfest's undercover judges is giving them a thorough once-over. We're just looking for a nice, clean truck. Yeah, so far, the first one's a very good one, and the second one is just the same. The judge's cover is blown. The Truckfest uh, inspectors here, look, seen him. Him that inspects all the trucks for the yeah, medals. I can't believe how much detail he's gone into, like, our lorries, to be fair. Hmm. Mark decides a little sweet talk wouldn't go amiss. How are we doing, mate? You all right? You certainly can, mate. The truck looked spotless from the outside, but the devil's in the detail. The most important one, what catches them out, where they forget, you pull this down, sun visor, and see if there's any dirt behind there. None at all. Very good. Yeah. Time for Mark to get the verdict. It's the same about the weather, isn't it? Dried it more times today than I've ever dried up in my life. You're a nice clean truck. Yeah. About there. Exterior, which is the whole of the truck, is roughly about there. Bloody hell. The lad's obsessive cleaning seems to have paid off, but just one problem. So I was actually going into the judging thing then, though? No, no. I'll show really, because I would have put, put me in, actually. Mark and Matt didn't put their names down for the competition. Matt! We should have gone there yesterday and put it our, our trucks down. We didn't put our trucks in for it. So if we'd known it's yesterday, if you'd have gone in there yesterday and put your truck in, because you're a good chance. I, I kind of dropped my foot in it. I should have put my truck in last night. I didn't know about it. So obviously it was too late for the judging, uh, although they still judged it. And uh, the bloke that judged it said to me that next year, do it, because it would have won. It wouldn't have won, it had been placed. I don't know it won't hit, but it's quite nice that my truck is uh, one of the cleanest trucks here. With Truck Fest over, it's back to the day job for Mark and Matt. And it's farewell to the rest of the Eddie Stobart crew. Over the last six weeks, we've met some of the 5,000 people that keep the company running. <laughs> it's clear trucking's an addiction. It's awesome diving them. The first day I sat in it, I felt about this big. We've met the backyard staff who keep the wagons on the road. Three. Pull down. You've been warned. And the planners that deal with a logistical nightmare. Crack on with it, John. See what you can do for us, all right? Oh, God. The Eddie fans welcomed us into their world. Hello, how are you? Stobarts are the creme de creme. They are the best by far. Stobart have taken us behind the scenes of everything, from high octane events to more genteel sports. Some journeys have been fraught with danger. If it did split open, it would be like something what you see on an Earl Schwarzenegger film. There's been frustration. The bad day has just turned into a disaster and excitement. There, there it is, that's the train! Come on, baby. The Eddie Stobart truckers will carry on delivering the goods that help keep our country running. So next time you see one of their trucks go past, remember to give the boys and girls in green a wave. They might even give you a wave back.